Hello everybody, welcome to uh, another deck tech uh, for new players for Arkham Horror the Card Game. Today we're going to be talking about Joe Diamond, the private investigator. He is a bit unique, uh, where as you can see his deck list is going to be changing every few seconds. If you want to write it down or like notice, you can just pause the video when it's not there. But we have his deck and his hunch deck, uh, which is a, it's, it's a little bit of an exciting time. I've, I've not played this guy, but I've seen both Bryn and Travis play them, and I think we do have some advice. For how to make a good Joe Diamond deck because a lot of his power comes from his hunch deck and sometimes your hunch just sucks and hopefully with this advice we can help your hunches not suck as much as they could. Um, this deck is built with two core sets and everything from the cycle in which Joe Diamond came which is the Circle Undone cycle. Uh, we recommend if you do not have two core sets to pick up another core set or proxy the cards you don't have it will help you win more. Uh, which one of you two want to talk a bit about Joe Diamond before we get to the deck itself? Yeah, you can do it, Brent. Oh, okay. So, like, the most the most notable thing to, about Joe Diamond is that we have four in both our book and our fist. Which uh, means that we're, like, pretty good at doing everything that we want to do. Mm -hmm. However, we only have a two in our brain and our foot, which means that we're very bad at doing the things that the game wants to make us do. Yes. The game says test brain X, take horror by for each point you fail by. Cool, we're just hitting the max on that. Mm -hmm. Pretty near every time. So we need our offense to outweigh this risk. Uh, and uh, most of what our character does is related to the hunch deck, which we'll get to in a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about the hunch deck. We'll get to like a whole section where yeah. we're going to talk about that and what it does. Um, his personal. Uh, uh, power card is is his Colt 1911s. Uh, they take up two hand slots, and uh, you also can use two tool assets when you have them, so you don't just like miss out on all the potential yellow cards that we're going to get through in the deck when you have them in play. Otherwise, that would be pretty. It would feel kind of bad because then you have to choose between shooting or solving, and you can do both because you're a private detective. Um. The other thing it does is it brings back stuff into your uh, from your discard pile into your hunch deck, which we will get to, as I said. His unsolved case also relates all to his hunch deck, so let's talk about the deck, then we'll get to the hunch deck. So we have a flashlight, which uh, is in a lot of these uh, starting decks if you're just building with two core sets, because flashlight honestly is a pretty good card. Right. It's in a lot of star index, even when you're not playing with just two core sets in a cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like two money for three, effectively three perceptions. That's that's pretty okay. Yeah, it's uh, also so a tool, so you don't have to discard it. Yes, if you get your 1911s. <clears throat> uh, we have the machete, which uh, so we recommend if you're just starting out. You might have heard this thing called the taboo list. Don't play with the taboo list when you're just starting. Uh, play with the game, the cards as they were written to really feel the excitement and power. This is relevant for both Machete and Dr. Milan Christopher, which will come later. Um, but so you might hear about the taboo list, but if you're just starting, ignore it for right now. So why is Machete good? Uh, doing extra damage on all of your attacks is good. Yeah, it also puts you up to and five, the, which is really comfortable. Yeah, five punch is really comfortable. And also it doesn't use any kind of ammo or anything. You just, you just, you just hit things. You just chop. It's cool. It's downside is like you can only be attached to one guy to get the extra damage, but like either you're playing on multiplayer and so more enemies are spawning, but then like other people in your group should have accounted for that <clears> and have ways to deal with them, or you're playing single player and you're not going to have quite as many enemies. Yeah. Uh, we also got Magnifying Glass, which will help you in that other stat of investigating, puts you up to five, which is very comfortable. It's fast and it's also a tool so you can have a Magnifying Glass when you have your sick-ass guns. Beat Cop, he's a great ally, puts you up to five fists uh, uh, for the stat. If you attack with Machete, you're at six, which is like, you're like, you're, you're, yeah, you're feeling like a very powerful at that point. Uh, you can also discard him to deal damage if you need to in a crutch, but he also uh, will pre present one, well, two Sanity Soak for you as well, which, as Bryn was saying, treachery cards are going to be painful, especially ones that test brain. So that is nice to have that little buffer as well. The health soak isn't negligible either. There's like a handful of treacheries that'll also, crunch yeah. you up for not making foot tests. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Dr. Milan Christopher, he helps your book out. So you can easily get to six book and six fist while investigating and attacking. 
with uh, Joe Diamond. And he also pays for himself really quickly because you are going to be investigating and discovering clues. Well, you only have one ally slot, Dr. Milan, and also the uh, B-Cop are both very power- powerful options. But for the most part, you're going to probably have to pick between which one. It's going to require a, bit, a little bit of reading into what's going on in the scenario, what's more important, and what your teammates have going on as well, because mm. you're probably a little more flexible than they are. Yeah. You do also have the, uh, the added uh, upside of whichever ally you play first, it's probably going to die at some point during the scenario. So you do want a replacement for it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I want, like, at a certain point, like, one is just going to, you're going you're gonna to know when it's going to time to switch. Like, it'll become obvious, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Dr. Line Christopher, on certain scenarios, is very good in the early game because there's going to be a bunch of clues for you to get. And then it can generally transition over into a fighting climax. That happens in a lot of scenarios. You still need to get clues, but you can shift into fighting. So at a certain point, you can be like, all right, time for Beat Cop to come in here and start shooting people. Yeah. Emergency cash gives you resources. Uh, which is good. Like, it's important. Blue and yellow cards tend to be a little on the pricey side. Mm-hmm. Some yellow cards. I mean, the yellow assets, yeah. anyway. Yeah, like Dr. Milan. Yeah, yeah he costs four. I mean, Dr. Milan just pays for himself, so... <laughs> yeah, but you do have to have that initial four to pay for him. So, like, if you've played a machete and something else, you might not have any money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need um, more money. Uh, deduction money helps good. you get more clues quicker, which is just great. And Vicious Blow is like deduction, but for killing dudes. Um, no nah, man, deduction is like vicious blow, but <laughs> deduction <clues. laughs> deduction is like vicious blow, but for getting clues. I agree with that. Um, so uh, this is one thing that might not you might not be aware of when you're just starting this game, but this is a thing that we call the Asphaloth Hump, where um, a lot of enemies will have like two, three hit points. Where you or like three hit points is the is the common Asphaloth Hump, where a weapon won't get through it in one action. And stuff like Vicious Blow is good because it helps you kill things quicker and get over that bump and continuing to progress the game without enemies slowing you down. All right, we have Guts and Manual Dexterity. So Guts is very good. We say this all the time because the game fights you most commonly through brain uh, and then second most commonly through foot. And Joe doesn't have good brain and he only got two feet. This helps. Do I actually you. have two manual dexterities, only one guts in this list? You do, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, those that's can be switched. It's because you got. It's because you have two steadfast. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this you. just helps you do that. It helps you survive. Guts is good. Manual dexterity is also good for Joe. Unexpected courage yeah. is like a gun. Other guts or manual dexterity, but it also, if you need to use it for a fist or a book or for helping out another teammate. Don't, you don't need to save them for yourself if things are looking okay for you. Man, Guts is so good. Guts is great. <laughs> All right, let's get to the cards from his cycle. Uh, we got Fingerprint Kit, which is a tool, which is relevant because it does take up a hand slot, but you can still hold it with your Colts. Um, and it basically just uh, helps you it's get clues quicker. It's a gun book for clues. Yeah, it's yeah, a gun it, book for clues. Yeah. yeah, it is. I would love to see in the design notes where he was like, mich- like he was like, Gun, but for clues, question mark, as, like, a future <laughs> card to make. <laughs> yeah, this is, like, the same as, like, the 41, just yep. for clues. <laughs> um, Hawkeye same folding cards, camera. Different color. Yeah, folding camera is really good. Yeah, so, Travis, why don't you talk about this, because I'm going to drink some more water. All right, so, folding camera, tool, takes up one hand slot, which is nice with your uh, special d- detective cult. Um... It does like three things, but like only the first two kind of matter. The third one is just nice. So whenever you finish, or whenever you're on the space, when the last clue is taken off of it, which you don't have to do, if one of your teammates does it, then you still get the, the little counter thing. Um, evidence, I suppose it's called. So if you get one, you get plus one brain, which is great because it pushes your abysmal two up to like a passable three. Yeah. And then with two of them, it puts up to you get plus one book, which like makes this basically magnifying glass. Mm-hmm. And then if you get three or more, you get plus one sanity, which is just it just basically heals the sanity, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, honestly you're going to be getting clues, and <clears throat> it's going to be very easy to proc and get those going. <laughs> uh, Travis, why don't you also talk about a cult lexicon because you're probably the person who used this most. Yeah, so a cult lexicon. One thing I kind of hate is because, like, this and Hollowed Mirror, they're so powerful that, like, why wouldn't you play them? But also, if you only play one your deck, so you can't really build around them or anything like that. 
I don't really like the limit one per deck as a power modifier, but anyway, uh, when it comes to play, you get three copies of Blood Right. One goes to your hand, two get shuffled into your deck, and if the Cult Lux Con leaves play, then you have to get rid of all your Blood, blood Rights too. Uh, blood Right itself is an insane card, so it's zero to play. It commits for three three symbols, but like you probably are never going to do that. But it's draw two cards, then you discard up to two cards from your hand. For each of the cards you discarded, you can either gain a money or spend a money to deal one damage to your location, and it doesn't provoke attacks of opportunities. So this is like potentially two points. You just you play it, and you just get two points of damage to something. Yeah. Like while also filtering the cards in your hand to better things. It's insane. And you're probably going to have resources because Dr. Milan Christopher is in play and been feeding you resource tokens. Yeah, like yeah. at the very least, it's like one free damage. Yeah. Yeah, and if, if you, you don't have, have any resources, damage. this card makes resources too. Yeah, well also you can, you can like, do that. It also lets you sift through your higher cost cards to find lower cost cards if resources are an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this card just does so much. Uh, uh, no. side, side note oh. on it, you always you always want to play your blood rights soon. You don't want to hold on to them for like the opportune moment. If you draw one, you should maybe be thinking about playing it in this this turn or the next turn because if, if the game makes you discard your occult lexicon, yeah. then you have to you'll lose them. So yeah, also like playing blood rights gets you closer to other blood rights. True, because you draw yeah. more cards in your deck, so. Um, like one thing to note, uh, in my deck list, I Hallowed Mirror, I actually coded the wrong color. We're going to get there next. We'll talk about that. It's supposed <laughs> to be blue, just in my deck list. I, you know, had a little brain fart, so it's there. I was like, did I not put Hallowed Mirror in this deck list? But yeah, it's just yellow at the bottom of the asset pile. Uh, why don't you guys talk about Hallowed Mirror? It's the blue version of a Cold Lexicon. I don't think it's quite so good, but like, it is still very, very strong. Yeah, yeah you get to heal two damage or two horror, well, and or two horror. Mm -hmm. from either yourself or another investigator at your location or an or ally allies. asset then draw a card this does yeah. a great job of uh, shoring you up against the treachery deck because yeah. like we said earlier a lot of the time the game's going to be like make this test or take damage and you're like sweet i'm gonna fail <laughs> take damage please <laughs> yeah i'll, I also I'll take up the, damage, please takes up the accessory slot which is really nice because you don't blue doesn't have a ton of options for that yeah you know it's got a couple but like you're not you yeah, probably really don't like, want to play most of them is Joe. Yeah. And um of of note as well, the occult lexicon, it does take up a hand slots and it's not a tool. So that is just there is some conflict there if you need your shooty shooty guns. But honestly, like <laughs> the purpose of both those cards is dealing damage. So like if you have one, you're probably fine without the other for the time being. If you like assuming you have your blood rights in your hand as well. One thing I do like with the duality between this and the occult lexicon is like they're just really bleeding into each other's colors a little bit. Mm -hmm. And while I don't necessarily like that kind of uh, effect or that kind of like sort of quote unquote color pie bleed, play magic, um, I do appreciate like the, the mirrored aspect of them where the blue one heals you and draws yeah. your cards. Which, Mirror. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the, the yellow one does damage with something that yellow doesn't get quite as much. Also, Something you need to notice is that the blue one gives you brain, book, and foot skills. I believe that the yellow one gives you brain, punch, and foot skills. Yep. Oh, no, that one's book, too. And punch. Wow, that's really weird. Um, of note, if this kind of conversation interests you when you're just starting Arkham Horror the card game, we're going to be releasing a list soon of cards that bleed into other colors. Um, so that's just something that we'll be releasing on our channel in the next month or so. So if this kind of topic interests you, Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and punch that bell to be notified when our videos go live. It's Curiosity! Fun, this, uh, it's kind of like a Guts, and uh, Perception is the book one. Uh, I don't know, yes, I want to play the least. Um, it's mostly here to be extra Guts. Yes. This is, yeah, this is why. It's a good point. I'm back <clears throat> up my choice of yeah. only having one Guts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, this, more, is, this is why there's only one. It's more likely with Joe uh, that you're going to only have the four cards in hand proc. But even then, it's just a Guts, which is great. Guts is good. I think that Joe is actually one of the better investigators, kind of, for Curiosity right now, just because your cards cost a million money, so they're going to be clocking up your yeah, hands. It's, that's fair, it's that's very fair. possible that like, you have a whole pile of cards that require hand slots or more money than you've got. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you're probably you not having... Trigger the extra one, but... You're probably never getting the seven or more, but, like, you're going to have the four or more yeah, pretty, pretty much Yeah, pretty commonly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, don't don't hold on to this waiting to have seven or more cards in your hand. Yeah, because yeah, pitching, pitching it for double symbols, that's pretty much that's what this card's for. for. Yeah, well, Guts yeah. is good. Don't be upset if you can't play Guts Plus. Um, <laughs> Steadfast is Guts. <laughs> Uh, it also can act as an overpower, but honestly, you're not going to need it that much for, with this build and just Joe's general stats. Uh, mm -hmm. And you could probably commonly, assuming you aren't getting the shit kicked out of you, get the 10 or more health remaining. Uh, health yeah, insanity. this one's like, part of the reason this one's so good is because you, you usually take damage by failing tests. And if you just use this, then you don't take damage. And then wow. it's better in the future. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. All right. It's like it's very snowball card. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, more often than not, you're gonna at least get the guts level out of this. Like, if you have like, when if you're, you're not getting the guts level, you're in trouble. Yeah, you're like things ain't looking good, and at that at yeah. that point, you're just like, thank you, steadfast. Thank you for even just giving me one brain for this test. Yeah, thank you for having any kind of symbol. Yeah. All right, let's go on to this hunch deck. So, why don't you guys talk a bit about the hunch deck? So, so one of the yeah, you go one, ahead. Okay. <laughs> one of the neat things about Joe is that his personal weakness doesn't live in his deck. So you only have the random basic weakness at the beginning of the game in your deck. What we have is this unsolved case in our hunch deck, which says if we didn't play it, we get less experience at the end of the the scenario. Sometimes that's not really a problem, but even when it is, it doesn't actually cost four because cards out of our hunch deck cost two less mm -hmm. we get to we get a stack of 10 10 insights plus the unsolved case and we shuffle it every turn and reveal the top card and you can play that card this turn for two less money mm -hmm. so even even if you're paying for it the unsolved case only costs you two resources yeah it's pretty soft as far as weaknesses go yeah and it doesn't even like even if you don't do it it's quite often where you flip the unsolved case and you're like, man, I would really rather just like do the thing I'm doing in this scenario than mess around with this. Like it doesn't even affect what's happening now, other than you kinda get a dead draw on your hunch deck, which man, that's gonna come up a lot. Yeah, that's well, uh, yeah. Seeing both Brynn and Travis play this, there's a lot of, so things here's my advice. <clears throat> if you're playing Joe Dine and you're just starting, you need some sort of reminder to flip the top card of your hunch deck at the <laughs> beginning of the investigation phase. That's yeah, my first that's piece of advice. There were so many times I was playing Joe Diamond and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to flip my hunch deck. Oh, well, I wouldn't have played that. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, so, <clears throat> like, a good thing is, like, maybe just, like, just, just figure out a method to remember to flip your hunch deck. That's advice number two. Uh, number, uh, that's advice number one. Advice number two, from what I've seen, is you're going to want cards as best as you can in your hunch deck that you can play consistently. Yeah, Otherwise, that's more of a thing when you have other sets because, like, yeah. two core sets are circling down, you're pretty limited with what you're playing. Yeah. So, like, uh, let's talk a bit about, like, actually, I think evidence and working a hunch are, like, the perfect example of what this could be versus what sometimes you have to get. Like, evidence is a good card, but it could just end up being a dead hunch because there's no enemies in play, right? No enemies yeah, in play, or there's an enemy in your play and no clues at your location. While working a hunch is basically just a free discover a clue if you can get to a location with a, with a clue, which is very likely in this game. Um, of course, there are times where even working a hunch will be dead, but like that's just kind of like the Joe Diamond... It's just less, it's, less likely. Yeah, like that's just yeah. like... If your hunches were always correct, they wouldn't be hunches. Yeah. Yeah, you'd just be a savant. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for, I think Travis is right. When you just have the core sets, it, core set in his cycle, it's very limited, but it does open up when more goes. But let's keep going to the next one. So these uh, two more, uh, two connect the dots, uh, which is, uh, huh. also, yeah, that, that one's a little bit hard to trigger, but it only costs two and it does have, high upside potential that you can yeah get like it is it is a high impact card it's just a question of being able to trigger it yeah yeah like for uh, play so. advice for like this hunch deck if you're playing like this exact list um because your things are so narrow don't be going way out of your way to try and play your hunch card every turn just mm -hmm. play your game and if your hunch card happens to line up with what you're doing like that's great 
maybe like go a little bit your way like hey maybe i can go seconds so that way my i can get the tier location when i get the clues i can yeah. crack the case or whatever uh, honestly like, also just like even just when you're starting out with this deck <clears throat> take a pen and paper and like write down um your hunch deck and like then you can at least keep track of what you could potentially be getting so you can maybe plan a little bit i think that's totally fair if you're just starting out with joe because you kind of like his hunch deck is his character and while his stats in the um book and fist are pretty high you're going to want some control over what you're doing and this will help you kind of like at least better understand what the odds are of what you need like for example crack the case if you know you have two crack the cases left or even like to connect the dots left just leave a clue on a location don't get the last one just like draw a card or gain a resource for your last action if you have nothing else to do it could be the difference between a hunch that works or a hunch that doesn't yeah like don't be afraid to fly around it a little bit but don't like don't be drastically no i can't help you i need to go to this other location so i can get my connect the dots to work Definitely. or whatever yeah like, that, that's yeah it's that's that should also just be kind of like with this you also want to balance all these things with winning the game if you're not winning the game, you're losing the game. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Great observation. Uh, is uh, I'm just reading. I don't know this card. Oh, yeah. So if you if you ever see delay the inevitable, it costs two. It's fast. We put it into play under the control of an investigator at our location. Then as a reaction, when they would take uh, either damage or horror, they can discard it to prevent all of that damage or horror. Free for the hunch deck. Yeah. Uh, you have to you have to pay you have to pay two resources every turn to keep it around. If this is ever on top of your hunch deck, you just want to throw it into play under yeah. whoever's control. It doesn't really matter. That's one. Yeah, you just uh, dump it in play, and then like it's yeah. the first time you have, you're taking damage, like get it out of here. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't even it doesn't matter if you, like even if it's only canceling like a horror. Yeah, it runs cool. to the you mythos. You don't really space. want to pay for it for too long. Yeah, and because yeah, it, it runs to the mythos free. phase, you can just even mm -hmm. just tank a mythos card yeah. with this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's no, like a, actually like one of the insights that I would probably play in like a full collection Joe oh, Diamond yeah. deck. Because I mean like what, what this also does if you don't if if you don't know why this is also so good, even if it gets like no value, it essentially makes your hunch deck two less cards, and this card actually can do something to help you not die, mm -hmm. right? And now you can yeah, just get your hunch deck a bit thinner, which is great. Yeah. Or help one of your teammates not die. Like maybe yeah. maybe one of your utility characters has been mired down with a big monster and you can't get there to kill it, but you can get there to throw a delay the inevitable on it so you can kill it next yeah, turn. Either turn. Yeah. And I think if you have a full collection and you're looking at what to put in your hunch deck, obviously, I mean, you need to look at all the insights because that's how it works. But also just anything that costs two is like, you're like, instantly just start looking at those cards to see if you think they'll be good hunches for Joe. Yeah, like general deck building for Joe's hunch deck is like you either want cards that cost two, so that way when you flip them on your, because the more that they cost money wise, then the stronger they should be, and you're not getting full value out of your two cost reduction if you're playing one costed or zero costed hunches. So you want your you want two cost hunches because they're the most powerful that you can get for free, or you want to be playing things that like cost like four or whatever because gain them 50% off again is like a huge mm. like if camping dots cost two it would be like a lot better yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah all right let's get into some upgrades corset um i believe didn't have too many options but beat cop upgraded becomes a lot better like beat cop level one uh, level zero is good beat cop level two is like pretty nice it's like almost as good as dr Mahan. yes yeah yeah. Um, the weird, the weird part about upgraded B cup is that it kind of changes its function from damage soak to, to yeah, like it's like, a horror soak, but also an offensive card. Yeah, it's another. But this thing. guy plays extremely well with soothing melody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Makes your soothing melody into sort of like blood right, but different. And this goes yeah. back to the whole asphalt off we hump. That's why B cop is also really nice. Upgraded magnifying glass. Um, you can return it to your hand if you need to, and it's just does what it does, but just uh, better. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's like it's there for like throwaway experience. You know, you're yeah. It's not a priority. Can't afford it's not a priority. That's like I really good, but yeah, I got one or two experience kicking around. Yeah, it is also nice for this guy because his hand slots are so contested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that like you know if you in the early turns you can throw out a magnifying glass to investigate better but if you need to replace it with a machete you don't actually have to throw it away you can just put it back in your hand and um one thing i just for you guys playing like is something like bandolier good for joe diamond if they had access to the dunwich legacy cycle if or you have it... access to it like yeah the bandol bandolier and it's uh its upgraded variant would probably be pretty solid for Joe. You it use a lot of cards kinda, to take up your hand slots, but... It depends what kind of Joe deck you're building, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like, uh, you can definitely focus... If you're focusing a little bit more on the monster killer part of it, then, like, absolutely yeah, what you want to be that. packing around, packing around yeah. a, a big shotgun or whatever, but, like, if you're playing, like, more Seeker Insight Joe, then you don't necessarily... And mm -hmm. you're relying on things like a, the, the 40, whatever the course that gun is and like his uh, 45 yeah the 45 and his 1911s and stuff like that it's a little bit less important and then yeah, with like that... the, band the bandolier is nice in that it does just let you carry your machete or whatever secondary weapon you're carrying all the time mm -hmm. no matter what yeah um extra ammunition helps if like you're <clears> only <throat> in on the 1911s it helps you shoot more with it which is nice um yeah if you have the 1911s you don't want to have other weapons yeah exactly um, all right, let's get into his cycle. So the first two are the tarot cards. They're <laughs> you seeing those a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, and all the yeah all the uh, circle undone ones. There's gonna be tarot cards. Uh, uh, Travis said really good in the, his write up that like these cards are they're boring but they're good. Like, uh, yeah, they're not flashy, but like just plus one to the stat is especially when sometimes it's free. It's just like. Whew. Um, what, what are your guys' thoughts? Because you can only have one tarot card unless you bring an Anna Caslow. I don't think Joe Diamond's worth the Anna Caslow experience. Uh, which, do they want to run both, or do they want to just choose one depending on their role for the campaign? You probably just want to pick one depending on, like, what role the team you fill more. Yeah, and then yeah. luckily, Ace of Swords and Death, they, like, it's written on the card. Do you punch or do you get clues? Get the one that you do. Yeah, if you grab if you grab three, then you're mulliganing for them. You're like quite favored to find one mm -hmm. in yeah. your opening hand and not have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Downside to that is drawing extra copies of a tarot card is actually pretty close to the deadest thing you're ever gonna do. Unless you discard them with blood right. Boom! Value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah they're, actually... they're they're pretty rough to draw the second one, then you're like, oh no. Yeah, it's like drawing a weakness that doesn't do anything right now. Yeah. Um, I've had worse. Stops you from dying. That's great. And gives you money back. And gives you money back. Yeah. yeah good, 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 good card. <laughs> yeah, like, have you, have you ever wanted your emergency cash to stop you from dying right now? <laughs> um, Glimpse the Unthinkable was in the write-up uh, for the Hunch deck. It's an insight that costs one. And uh, seems uh, pretty great for a Hunch. Just fill your deck yeah, like back up with your good cards. And then draw until your hand is full. Like, that's incredible. Just as a side note, I'm so excited to play this card in some kind of, like, hand size <laughs> deck with uh, the Dream Serum. And I'm just like, oh, look at all the extra copies of cards I'm drawing, but I'm not hand size yet. Yeah, we'll be recording. I'll be like, I'm just going to pause <laughs> this recording for YouTube. And then, like, Travis counts. and like, all right, Travis has this many cards in hand. We're good. <laughs> But yeah, this is like another act uh, example of what I was saying earlier. Because like I've all, I've been interested in playing Joe Diamond, but like the hunch deck scares me because <clears throat> I hate when I can't do something with my cards, right? And this is like so high value. It costs five experience, yes, but like it's so strong, and you can play it for just one action and no resources. Wow. Yeah, so like it fills with a slot in your hunch deck where it's never gonna be dead. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that I said like you should be playing, shouldn't be playing cards that cost one in your hunch deck, but like this is probably a little bit of an exception. Oh yeah. And then like it just reloads you. Like if you need to have, if you need a weapon, it'll probably find you one. You need some way to get extra clues, probably find you one. You need some skills to make your foot and brain better because the game's beating you down. It'll probably find you that too. Um, correct like, me. From Correct me if I'm wrong, but like when you play a card from your hunch deck, it goes into your discard, right? That's why a star effect yeah, you're comes from that. So like when you do glimpse the unthinkable, some of your hunch cards you might just want you just leave them in your discard pile. Don't you don't need to shuffle them back in, right? Uh, because yeah. so, like they're probably also like to be real with what this deck wants to do, weaker outside of your hunch deck. So maybe just consider leaving them in your discard pile. Right. 
the recycling aspect, like most of your cards are probably action when you re- recycle, aside of aside from like deduction and vicious blow, I think. Just because you only have so much money to work with, like mm-hmm. odds are that you're probably not gonna be able to play afford to play like you know, your whatever hand slot assets you have and then like three allies in a game or something like that. Like you're just not gonna have that money. Yeah, but then just like and then with that, yeah, exactly. Like shuffle in your guts, your your steadfast, your curiosity, and then like your hands loaded and you're like, I am so safe right now. That just feels great. As a player, you're yeah. like, Yes, I've done it. Mm-hmm. Joe is also probably the best investigator to draw a giant pile of cards on because you do only have that one random basic weakness in your deck. Yep. So yep. putting yourself closer to that oh. is not such a big thing. Man, if you're like, you don't you don't have to worry about the about the other ones because unless you shuffled the unsolved case into your deck, which no. I don't even think you can do. No, it gets removed from the game. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's possible to actually put that into your discard pile. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you get a weak basic weakness with Joe, you're like, I'm feeling great. You're because laughing. his personal weakness yeah. on it's it's not too bad. It's yeah, not just don't too draw bad. over uh, overzealous. That's a bad like yeah. except yeah. Bad time for Joe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well that's Joe. We hope this deck guide has helped you think if maybe Joe is the investigator for you. And I think uh I think this deck would work really well. Just seeing it all for just it's always interesting to see what Travis and Brain have come up with for these uh, core and cycle decks, because I don't have any input on them. I just make the pretty pictures on the screen. Um, mm-hmm. But I think this deck would work pretty well. Um, with yeah, all I think them. Joe is one of the investigators who really benefits from having a fuller collection. Mm-hmm. But that oh, being yeah. said, I think I still think this is like one of the more comfortable decks for your uh, for like one cycle and two core sets. Yeah, definitely. Um, but thanks for watching, everybody. If there's any cards that you recommend for players outside of these cycles, comment down below. We appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one.